Right, so I wanted to leave a uh, video review on Woodley Christian Care Home based in Mansfield, Nottingham. And the reason that I'm doing this is specifically because they have <laughs> underhandedly um, circumnavigated the rules on leaving reviews and they've got one of their own members of staff to um, leave a review and basically negate my honest review, which I feel is a slap in the face to my mother who suffered in this care home. So I'm just going to go through some comments that they have made and I'm just going to put a few things right. So there is a, a, somebody called S.J. Crawford and they've left a review on Google Reviews about Woodley Christian Care Home and they've said in response to my honest review, firstly, I am shocked to read such negative comments that someone has placed in such a public domain, clearly knowing that the care home could not respond. I have been involved with Woodley Christian Care Home for around two years now. Uh, hello. <laughs> How stupid is this person? You just said that they can't respond, yet I work for them. I've been working for them for two years now. What kind of garbage is this? You're not supposed to be able to leave reviews if you, uh, if you work for the company. It's biased, isn't it? It's bullshit, basically. Then you go on to say, I think it's fair to say that it's one of the best, if not the best, homes in the area. Are you having an absolute laugh? I mean, you're going to say that because you work for the company. You've been working there for two years. So you're bound to say this because it's all about a coin, isn't it? Hey, you, can, you can discredit my honest review, which again, I feel is a slap in the face of my mother who suffered in this place. But as long as you're making money, that's all right, isn't it? That's why I'm doing this review. So you're not biased at all then, really, are you? Then she goes on to say, the staff are so accommodating they really cannot do enough to make residents feel more welcome. They go the extra mile every waking moment. Alexa, volume down. This is absolute lies. This is from a person that works at the company and from a person that wasn't even present in my mother's care, never even met my mother, and she doesn't know what kind of problems we went through. Yet, uh, what, they go the extra mile, they do this, they like garbage, absolute garbage. And then she goes on to say, the manager has one of the kindest hearts. She's a beautiful person with such knowledge and skills. It's probably her that wrote this review. Um, she loves what she does and you can tell. <laughs> no, you can't. You really can't. Um, she'll do her best to go out of her way, make you feel loved and wanted and cared for. She's the master of craft. Yeah, witchcraft. She's not the master of any craft. I'll tell you what happened there. Alexa, volume down. So I was disgusted with my mother's treatment. So I spoke to the manager and I requested a one-to-one -one meeting with her so we could discuss what the hell was going on. She said, okay, we'll have this meeting. Two o'clock, went back, two o'clock. She says, go up to your mother's room, I'll come and see you in there. I thought that was odd. Then she comes in with a notepad and pen and one of her colleagues, and she has the meeting in front of my mum. When I asked her specifically for a one-to-one -one meeting away from my mum, because I didn't want to cause her any distress. So they sit down for this meeting in front of my mum. I wasn't allowed to ask anything. She just sat there and looked at my mum for five minutes. Is everything all right? Everything all right? And then she left. No questions were asked. No questions were answered. Garbage. And she circumnavigated the one-to-one -one meeting I'd asked for, knowing full well if she did it in front of my mum, I wouldn't be able to raise any issues in front of her. It would demoralise her and it would... It's just rotten to do it in front of her. I don't want to say about a toilet and care needs in front of her and stuff like that. So, yeah, she's the master of a craft. Witchcraft. Right, Then this S.J. Crawford goes on to say, end of life care is better than most other places. Oh my God. Uh, that is because the manager is so past about making sure the best of end of life care is priority. Dying with dignity and love. Okay, I'll tell you a little bit about that. Dying with dignity and love. Jesus Christ, you've got no idea how angry I am. So a few things happened when there was there. My mum was there for all of just two weeks. Um, at that point, I wanted her out of there. I would have carried my mum out of there under my shoulder rather than leave her in there another day. Um, two weeks she was in there, she was not offered one bath or one shower, despite me bringing this up many times. No no cleaning. Um, my mum wanted a bath and they didn't even give her one. I raised it twice. It's a lovely sunny day. Why haven't you taken my mum out in a chair to sit in the garden in the sunshine? What the hell is wrong with you? Day after day we went back, lovely and sunny. My mum was just laid up in bed. She wanted to go out. They wouldn't let her have any fresh air. What the hell is going on? What was it that woman said? Dying with dignity and love. Care is priority. You can see why I'm angry, can't you? 
Um, what else have we got? There was also a time I went there. My brother was bear witness. He was with me. Um, we sat at my mum's bedside. She says, uh, I need some meds. Okay. I press the buzzer. Ten minutes passed. No one's come, mum. Just be patient. She said, they've got a lot of work to do. <sighs> okay. Forty minutes pass. I said, that's it. They're taking the mic. I press the buzzer again. She's telling me to calm down. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. An hour passes. An hour and forty I've been sat there and I said, I've had enough of this. This is crap. I pick up the phone. I phone the building up. I said, I'm in room 29 with my mum. Press the buzzer twice. An hour and 40, you go, you're still not here. What the hell's going on? Okay, we'll send somebody up. They sent two nurses up after 10 more minutes. They come in the room, and one of the nurses went, do you need help with your toilet in? And my mum says, it's too late now, duck. I thought, good, now you can clean her properly. But fancy putting her through that, giving people bed sores. An hour and 40. I raise this with the manager. She says, if um, the buzzer's been pressed, it'll be logged. I'll look into it. Never heard from her again. She saw it, she knew it was true. She did jack shit. Okay. There was a complaint that my mum had with her ear. Her ear was killing her. The nurse says you need olive oil for it. We'll put it on prescription. She asked for it on the Thursday. Even by Monday she'd not had it done. I just left her with a painful ear. And then the, the icing on the cake for me. I went in there one morning. I was doing shifts every four hours, alternating it with my two brothers. I got there at 10 to 8 one morning. I opened my mum's door to a room. The room was pitch black. Curtains were closed. I put the light on and I was like, oh my God. I couldn't believe what I saw. I just stood there in shock. So my mum was laid there in the dark. She had a quilt half off of her. She was going, <laughs> she was trembling in bed and her legs were trembling. She was half in, half out of the bed. On the bedside table, she'd knocked her tea over and everything was covered in tea. There was tea dripping on the floor and that's how she was left. <sighs> Lovely, caring, Christian. If, <sighs> So anyway, I complained. Five nurses come rushing in. They're doing everything nice for me, mum. And my mum says, um, you see, Matt, they're all right. They're all right. I says, mum, this is garbage. I want you out of this place. I said it in front of them all. None of them said a word. They all kept their head down. I said, I came in here this morning like a bomb site had gone off. Like, unbelievable. Books covered in tea. Everything covered in tea. You're half hanging off your bed. You're freezing cold. You've got no quilt on you. Ten to eight in the morning. That tells me that she'd not been checked on. What was it she said? They treat you with dying people with dignity and love. Yeah, whatever. Um, and then they go on to talk about the building, this Crawford person. It's an old building. I know many young ones looking for a place with their parents would like to these tip top prestigious homes, but old buildings look and feel like a real home. The home shit. It's like Hogwarts. You need a goddamn map just to get in and out of the place. The lifts are rickety, they have no COVID thing. First day we went in, they asked us to wear a mask and sanitize. They asked me one more time in the two weeks. It's supposed to be every time. They didn't keep on top of you wearing your mask or your sanitization. They weren't even bothered um, for COVID and that. Uh, the place is just really difficult to get around. Speaking of the place, the first room they put my mum in, bearing in mind she has had bowel cancer and cervical cancer, needed lots of toileting care. They put her in this room and the toilet adjacent to where my mum was, wasn't even in the room, wasn't en suite, was broken. So I said, how the hell is my mum going to get toilet in needs when the toilet opposite her room is broken? So to know what Woodley Christian care home did, they found another room that was en suite with an old guy in it, and they swapped rooms. They put the old guy in that room, and my mum in his room, which was a much nicer room. But I felt for the guy that they'd moved. And in the first room they put my mum in, there was something squished into the carpet, like a great big mound of toffee. It was disgusting. The, the walls are disgusting, it needs painting. <laughs> <clears throat> <laughs> and then this Sarah Crawford, or whatever her name is, it's beautiful care home. It's really person centred. <sighs> yeah, right. Um, so I'm gonna have to stop you there. I've had enough of your bullshit promoting your company. At the end of the day, my mother was neglected in there, from bathing to company to meds to toilet care to getting outside to to everything. She was neglected every step of the way. <laughs> the rooms are terrible. And do you know what they charged you? Nine hundred and twenty-five pound a week, and they couldn't even supply you with a working TV. So on day two, the TV wasn't working, there was no signal. Smallest TV, like a 16-inch TV. So I complained, the TV's not working. Hours pass. Like, how am I supposed to leave her here with no TV? Nothing to do, just stare at blank walls. So I said, look, the TV's not working, nobody's been. Oh, we'll send somebody up when he's got time. Garbage. I left it till the next day. My mum had had no telly on for a whole day, just sat in a quiet room. Hi, right, mum, telly not working yet. No, no one's been. I went mad. Well, I didn't go mad, I felt mad inside. 
I went straight out of the building, straight to Argos, and I picked up an all-in-one TV aerial, 45 quid. Brought it back, fitted it, got the TV working. Said to the staff, I shouldn't have to be buying aerials for my mum for, for TV. That You know, we're paying you £925 a week and you can't even supply a working TV. What was it she said? It's a lovely old Kieran, perfect building. Bollocks. So, that's the end of my response to Sarah Crawford, whatever her stupid name is. But I want you to ask yourself one question. If... Would a Christian care home is a decent care home? And if I'm full of crap, and if they treated my mother with dignity and respect, then what the hell is this review all about? Why would I come on here and publicly tell you the truth about what happened? Why would I say these things if it didn't happen? I wouldn't, would I? I'd be singing the praises, saying, thank you for caring for my mum in her hour of need. But you didn't. You didn't do jack shit. Even the staff, when I questioned them about my mum's medication, didn't even know what she was on. They didn't even know what they was giving her. Woodley Christian Care Home cannot deal with palliative care. They never have been able to do. They're rubbish. They're just not. They're not set up for it. But they shouldn't take people in and claim they can just to get the coin, because then people suffer. So, my mum went to John Eastwood Hospice, and they were fantastic. She got payments whenever she wanted. The food was restaurant quality. Um, the staff were there instantly. I can't sing their praises enough. They were twelve out of ten. They were the best. They looked after my mum, they did treat her with dignity and respect, and she loved being there. Woodley Christian Care Home gets zero out of ten minus, they should be struck off, the building should be closed. Um, again, I wouldn't say that, I'd be singing their praises like John Eastwood Hospice, had they done as good a job as John Eastwood Hospice. They just didn't. I wish they had. I wish my mum's last chapter would have been a decent one, and it wasn't. <laughs> so I'd like to finish this review by saying this to SJ Crawford. I'd like to say this to the manager of Woodley Christian Care Home. And I'd like to say this to the owners of Woodley Christian Care Home, who I understand is some rich, fat cat doctor who just wants more and more coin for a shitty service so they can get rich. Now, before I finish this review, I'm sure Sarah Crawford would have something to say like, oh, it's his word against mine and all that didn't really happen. And I'm not going to ever accept that because, like I said, it's a slap in the face to my mother. She suffered there and she deserves to have a story told and heard. So for her to de demoralise my story... It's not acceptable, it's not going to happen. But yes, you know, without evidence, one could say it's one person's word against the other. Although, again, I wouldn't be saying this unless it was true. There'd be no logic to doing it. I'd be thanking them, not telling the truth about them. But luckily for me, I took a little video while I was there of a woman screaming. So I'll tell you what happened. I was in my mum's room one evening and I could hear a lady screaming, Help! Help! Somebody help me! And I listened to this for five minutes and I'm thinking, Jesus, what's going on out there? And um, I couldn't listen to it anymore. This person was really in distress. So five minutes had passed and I said to mum, I've got to nip out a second, mum, I won't be long. So I walked out of a room into the corridor to find another patient's family member, this tall geezer stood there, hands on his hips, looking around, you don't know what to do. And so I says to him, it's all right, mate, I'll sort it. I'll go find a member of staff. Walked down to the left past the room that this woman was screaming please can't somebody just help me please jumps in the lift goes down the lift goes all the way to one end of the building not a single member of staff inside all the way to the end of the building no staff nowhere have to find my way back to the lift through all the little twists and turns of this maze goes to the main entrance there's just no staff i goes into the canteen there's one nurse she's in the far corner on a laptop so i said excuse me there's a woman up there screaming. She, she sounds like she's in an emergency. She's in a lot of pain. She's begging for help. The nurse said to me, yeah, I'll be with you in a minute. Let me just finish on this laptop. I'll just shut it down. <sighs> I wanted to say, you get off your fat ass and get upstairs and you see to that woman. That's what you get paid for. Not pissing around your laptop. But I didn't. I just took a deep breath, got back in the lift, went to sat my mum, watching the clock on the wall. How long is this going to take? About five or six more minutes. Ding, the lift opens, the nurse comes in and deals with the person. Now again, Sarah Crawford will say, oh, that didn't happen, it didn't happen. Lucky I took a video of it. And here it is. That's the end of my review. Fuck you.